Hi, we aren't in a regular lecture hall, and this clearly isn't a presentation from something that is coming from a typical lecture hall projector, but I want to talk about the intensity of the electric field that would be being created at the screen of a projector in a typical classroom setting, and also from that electric field, the magnetic field that we would be expecting. So for a typical projector, you might have about 10 watts of light power being delivered to the screen, and a typical area for a projector screen is around three meters per second. So that means that the intensity of the light is going to be about 3.33 watts per meter squared. And intensity, on average, is the same thing as roughly the size of the pointing vector for a plane light wave. Well, intensity also happens to be the square of the electric field divided by two times the permeability of free space and the speed of light. So the electric field amplitude, if I solve for that, I can multiply both sides by two times the permeability times the speed of light. So I'd have two times the permeability times the speed of light times my intensity, which is my average power per area, is the electric field squared, or the electric field is the square root of what I just said. So plugging in the values that we have, mu naught is going to be 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per amp. The speed of light in a vacuum is about 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and our intensity is 10 thirds of a watt per meter squared, or 3.33 watts per meter squared. So when I calculate that out, that gives me a peak electric field of 50 newtons per coulomb. So using our relationship between magnetic and electric field amplitudes, the magnetic field amplitude is the electric field amplitude divided by the speed of light, so our magnetic field would have an amplitude of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 7 Tesla. Now, for a little bonus. Anytime light is striking a surface, there's a transfer of momentum and there is a pressure from that force being spread all over that surface area. And the pressure is found for complete absorption by taking the pointing vector, the average intensity of light striking the surface of an object, and dividing by the speed of light. For perfect reflection, it would be a factor of two times that. So for something like a projector, much of the light's getting absorbed by the screen, but some of the light is clearly getting projected back. So you could come up with some estimate for the amount of absorbed versus reflected light, somewhere between one and two. So for a low end estimate, if the light would be completely absorbed by that screen, we would have our 3.33 watts per meter squared divided by our speed of light. So the pressure across that surface would be 11 nanopascals, 1.1 times 10 to the negative eight pascals, which is about a factor of a thousand smaller than the smallest pressure change that our ears can register. Thanks for watching.